I want to talk about this William Regal situation. This is uh, this this kind of came out of nowhere, but also yeah. unsurprising. So on Dynamite, MJF turned on Regal, and he was carted off in an ambulance. You saw that D Brian Danielson played a part in this. He came out to the ring, and then you saw other footage where he got in the ambulance with him. So Dave stated that there he was still under contract for three years, but something was not right. On Thursday, Fightful reported that the talent believed that Regal's contract could be up this month. And before War Games, Triple H tweeted a meme of Regal screaming War Games. Now, from everything that I am hearing, it looks like Regal's going back there in an office position. Now, I don't know if this is a, uh, you know, some sort of restriction on him being on TV or not, but it looks like he's headed back to WWE in an office position. I think Dave mentioned this with Garrett on Observer Radio also this morning. This is very interesting. So was it a clause in his contract? Did he always have this agreement? Is this something, you know, he's unhappy? There was a report that EC3 put out. There was a quote online saying that Regal had an issue with the level of maturity in the back within management uh, in the company. You know, Regal is a very professional guy. This guy's been around the wrestling business forever. He's really not a, he's not a he, nonsense around him. Doesn't really go well. Did you see that video of him talking about foot, foot positioning uh, in oh, NXT? Yeah, I've seen that. What a fascinating I've seen that video, video, right? So and many times. You know what? An amazing mind, first of all, uh, but WWE definitely will benefit from it. AEW was benefiting from having him there. Uh, this seems a little abrupt. You know, he Hunter and him are friends. Uh, you always want to be where you, you want to be. They, I think him getting released from WWE was a big mistake to begin with. I think a lot of people agreed on this. But this is playing out in a very strange way. And when you see people that have long-term deals that no longer want to be somewhere, that that's a problem. I think that the, the in next three months between now and the Bill to Mania, is going to be Triple H's end of Godfather one moment. <laughs> because we've seen he's basically everything leading up to January has been him handling and cleaning up some of the business and just trying to get an appraisal of where he is. Mm. This is his Michael had to go to Italy for a while and figure himself My out God. until the heat was down. Is it uh, true? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. Um but sans car explosions, um, Triple H has just basically been trying to get things in shape for the start of next year. And I think next year we're going to start to see the true totality of Triple H's power in the WWE from the top down. Because yeah. I think when you've seen new regimes come into the business, whether it's a booking regime or a new ownership group or new management, the ones that have been the most effective have been the ones where it's been a natural transition. It has not been a stark, sharp, complete 180. WCW with the new blood and the resetting of the titles and hitting the restart button, bombed. It was a complete washout. Um, if you watch Historically Speaking, my show on the Mat Men channel, I talk about how Georgia Championship Wrestling uh, and world the World Championship Wrestling show on TBS as soon as it came into WWF hands in that sharp 180, they lost ratings, became the third most watched wrestling show on TBS. We're tied for second with championship wrestling from Georgia. Yeah. So taking a WWE, looking at history and applying the things that worked with new power and new regimes and owner new ownership ostensibly and not doing what they did at the invasion and hot shotting everything and blowing it sky high has served them very well so far and i think we're going to start to see more of the wheels turning and more of those big changes that everybody wanted as we head into january february march i could see nxt going over a complete ideological overhaul and everything well, the independent know, wrestling scene may not be safe no I, well i'll tell you I, I know that they are looking at indies again that that concept that they're only going to do you know athletes and the nil program and a lot of people were freaking out that they're no longer going to look at the indies. That That's not true. They are going to look at the indies. There's tremendous talent on the indies. You know, that, that mentality that they once had. Actually, they've always had this mentality, right? That you get a lot of bad habits everywhere except for WWE. That's how they've always seen it. 
You know, we saw that in the 2000s, in the late 2000s, when you had the cookie cutter uh, FCW, you know, program that came out that was very beneficial for them. You know, they were able to get major stars out of there. NXT turned it to something they never intended it to become and to become a full fledged, you know, secondary promotion in the United States that was comparable as far as, you know, uh, talent went to any other company they, out there. They, they essentially became an upgraded ring of honor. They took talent from everywhere. AEW has taken that role away from them as a secondary organization. However, you know, they, they have they have contracts. They have NXT on, on you know, essentially primetime TV every Tuesday for two hours. You got to do something a little more than, than guys that nobody really knows and just characters. I know you're getting them ready for the main roster, but you need to inject what you were doing a couple years prior. NXT 2016, 17, 18, even 19 was on fire was a fantastic promotion that got, you know, gutted for a number of reasons. Their their ideology changed. Um, and it, what doesn't help is that they didn't have house shows again until recently. They, they haven't done One house shows. That, yeah, and, and how do you how do you learn to work if you don't? You know, they have that level up NXT, which is, you know, the, the younger guys on there. But, you know, for a while you had guys like Keith Lee that were in NXT not really doing anything. And, and it, it, mm -hmm. it was shocking to me. So, and then they moved everybody up way too early, right? Karrion Cross came up for no reason too early. I, I think Keith Lee could have benefited by being down there a little bit more. They brought Matt Riddle up. You know, they, they were trying all these things during the pandemic. It just didn't work out the way they wanted. So they totally did a 180 again and went back to the original concept of being developmental. That doesn't work on primetime TV. And when you have competition from AEW, that also takes away from this because there is better wrestling. You're no longer the wrestling product. Now you're just developmental. I think a guy like Regal will be able to fix that. Now, I have heard that they're looking at the indies again. I know that they're looking to up the talent in NXT again and kind of beef it up. Uh, my personal assumption, and this is a guess on my behalf, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked if TakeOver comes back next year mm, with the that, way that the way that they're kind of aligning and they're moving pieces again in that company. So, you know, Regal... Uh, I, I, I'm I'm so disappointed if it is true that he he was unhappy because of immaturity. I I hope that's not the case, because that that's something that you've heard over and over again that these little issues were happening. You know maybe maybe he was like, listen guys, it's just the end of the day. AEW's a prom uh, you know they're they're a new promotion and they have these growing pains and it's disappointing to see a guy like William Regal that has the experience want to leave because you need those it, guys. It's you certainly do, and it is a little disheartening to hear that if that is the case. But also, his son's in NXT. You hear about, they've talked about NXT Europe, and there's a lot of opportunities there. There's a lot of different reasons why William Regal would want to go back to the WWE. Sure. You know, his one of his best friends in the business is running the company now. Listen, There's and, opportunities and he attributes for him to his life changing son, like, to Vince. You know, Vince gave him yeah. an opportunity when he was in a really bad place. You've heard those interviews. So obviously, listen, I'm big on loyalty. I'm loyal to a lot of people, especially Observer, right? I'm 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 here. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't I'm not going anywhere. I wouldn't want to go anywhere. I'm loyal here. If I leave, then that means that something happened. Yeah. That's how I see or it. Or someone threw a solid gold boat at you. Like, that uh, that's possible happen. too. A solid gold boot also will uh, will get me relief. <laughs> but you know, but, this this changes this changes a lot of things here. Mm -hmm.